Welcome everyone to our new annotation tutorial videos. This is going to be a seven part video series where I'm going to be demonstrating and teaching you how to use the annotation filter. Now these videos have been very sought after. There's been lots of requests for us to do some videos on the annotation filter specifically after the success of our Filter Friday videos that we've released. So firstly then, let's take a look at where the annotate filter is within the software. And you'll find it under the presentation category. So if we go to presentation, you'll see that annotate sits there. So I'm just gonna apply this filter. And you'll see that now that in my chain, I've got that annotate filter there. I've got the settings for the annotate, and this gives us a quick insight of the different annotations that we can do. So we've got shape, arrow, pencil, text, image hide, magnify, and spotlight. And the final thing I just wanna bring attention to at the moment, which we'll look at in more detail later on, is the annotation ranges now down in the player tab. And this is where we will see the different annotations we've put onto our video and the length that those annotations are currently sitting at. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into each of the annotations. I'm just gonna quick give you a quick demonstration of each one and how it works. And then I'll show you some of the more advanced things we can do with annotations, which we'll all learn together throughout this series. So let's first jump into the shape annotation. And you'll see when I select the shape tab, the filter settings for that annotate appear. And you can see them here now in our filter settings. So with the shape tab selected, I can now create my shape. So let's say I wanted to create a rectangle around my vehicle. So there all I did was just click and drag to make my rectangle shape. I can change the size of it once it's been put on or I can change the position to anywhere I want it. And this is, Functionality will work with all of the annotations. So in the shape itself, you can change the shape from a rectangle to a ellipse. So I'm gonna keep this one as a rectangle. You can see we've got the border color here. Uh, so if I wanted to change the color from red to orange, I can make the border transparent, but it will only make sense if I've got a fill color. But here then I'm gonna be covering up my vehicle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the fill color transparent and have the border. And then we've got this slider here for the border thickness so I can just increase this as I want. You'll see there's this tracking option here and we're gonna cover this later on. And also this render flattened we'll cover later on. So that's a quick intro into the shape. Okay, so now that we've looked at the shape annotations, I'm gonna move over to the arrow. With any annotations that you've created, you can just right click and delete or press the delete key on your keyboard. So I'm gonna remove that for now and we'll move on to the arrow. So now I've just clicked onto the arrow tab and you can see the filter settings for the arrow have appeared. So now I can create an arrow, any direction I want it. So again, let's say, I'm just gonna make one point into this vehicle. Here I can change the arrowhead to a line or an arrow. I can change the thickness of it. So if I go back to that line or just an arrow, whichever you prefer. And again, we've got the color. So nice and simple easy way to create an arrow which you can have then following a person of interest or a vehicle of interest. Again, you'll see that this tracking and render flattened will appear in all of the annotations. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the arrow annotation now and we'll jump onto the pencil annotations. This one, you can see there's even less filter settings for it. The pencil just allows you to free draw anything you want onto your image or video. So in this case, if there was something of a uh, peculiar shape, then I could just free draw around it as I wanted. And you can see we've got this thickness again. 
Now, the pencil tool is good when you're sort of following routes that people have taken on a map. So you can just draw the route that they took on a map, which is quite handy. So now moving on, let's take a look at the text annotate then. So when I select the text annotate, now again, I just need to create a selection on my video where this text is going to appear. So I'm going to make a, a rectangle here. And let's say I'm just going to write that it's the suspect vehicle that we're looking at. Now there's quite a few settings in here that we need to go through. Um, most of them are, are straightforward. So you can see that we've got the font and the font size, which you can change. Whether you want it to be bold, italic or underlined. So let's say we just want a bold italic. The color of the text. And you can see here we've got the background color and the border color. Now by default, these are switched off. Um, in this case, I'm going to have the background color. So I'm going to deselect this. And because I have now can see the, back, the original size of my shape, I just need to change the size of that rectangle. Uh, just like we did with the shape annotate. If I wanted to, I could add a border as well by deselecting the transparency. But for this, I'm going to leave it without a border. You've got some uh, alignment settings here. And then a very interesting one, you've got the add macro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new text box here. And I'm just going to demonstrate this add macro. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is select add label to macros. And this will add a label to the macro to say what it is that's been added to the video. And for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to do position in frames. So say I want the video on, I want overlaid on the video, what frame of the video we're looking at. So I'm going to choose position in frames, macro. And you can see because I've selected that add label, it's added this position in frames for me. Again, I can resize this. I'm just going to place it at the bottom. Right now, and we've not looked at this yet, but it's a good time to introduce it, is this annotation ranges. So you can see right now on my um, player bar here, the annotation is currently just sitting on one frame. So if I deselect this and move to the next frame, you'll see that they've disappeared because they, the annotations are just sitting on that one frame that I created. For this position in frames, I want it to be shown on all of the frames. So I'm just going to right click this and we're going to have a, a video in this series dedicated to, to settings like this. But I'm just going to set this for all frames. And now when I play this video, you'll see that as we go through the frames, those frames are going to be shown on the video. Now there's lots of different annotations, uh, lots of different macros in this annotate, and they're definitely worth going through and having a look at them because it's really useful to have some of this information present on your videos. Okay, so now we're moving on to the image annotation. So the image annotation here, where you can bring images onto your evidence, whether you're bringing a, an image that you created in a different workflow or maybe you're bringing a, a company logo. So I'm going to demonstrate it just bringing a logo onto your evidence. So for the image file, I'm just going to search for my logo. And then just again, uh, clicking and dragging will bring that image into five. You've got this by default keep aspect ratio selected. If you've got a transparent background, like on this image, which is a PNG, we've got a, a transparent background. You want to keep the this as none. We can have a border if we want it. And again, the usual settings for the border. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at the hide annotate. So the hide annotate allows us to use a pixelation or a blur effect to hide any sensitive material in our evidence. 
So for example, when this individual comes into the video, maybe we want to uh, blur this person or pixelate this person out so that we're um, keeping his identity confidential. So what I'm going to do is with the hide selected, again, I'm just going to click and drag an area to either pixelate or blur. So you can see the effect. This is where we can switch between the blur and pixelation. So blur or pixelate. You can then change the strength. So I normally like to have a lower sort of strength on my pixelation. The shape, again, we can choose between an ellipse or a rectangle. Then if you wanted a border, by default it's turned off, but we can deselect the transparency. And that's it for the hide. Okay, next we're going to look at the magnify annotation. So instead of pixelating our individual this time, maybe we want to magnify him. So I'm going to go to the magnify annotate. And again, now I'm just going to click and drag a box on my video. Within the center of this box, you'll see this blue little dot. Now this is what is being magnified within this selection. So I can place this anywhere I want. So here I'm going to place it on our individual. And if we take a look at some of the filter settings here, we've got the zoom value, so you can increase how much zoom we've got on our individual. We've got the zoom method. So this is your different interpolation methods of, or the different interpolation algorithms when you're resizing using the magnify, whether you want it to be nearest or by cubic or any of the others. The shape, as, as all the others, we can choose between an ellipse or a rectangle. We have our border color, and the border type is a little bit different in Magnify. So you can have the usual border that we've been look, looking at in the other filters or the other annotations, which would be shape only in this case. There's some extra ones in here, and this is to where we can point to what we're zooming. So for example, I can point to zoomed area, three lines. It's going to create them lines point into that area. And that's it for the magnify for now. Okay, and last but not least, we're going to look at the spotlight annotate. So for the spotlight, most of the time you're using this just to bring attention to something in your video, in your image. So here I'm going to bring attention to the vehicle, so I want to spotlight it. So again, move the annotation selected, I just click and drag to make that spotlight size. You see we've got a couple of new settings here, and this is contrast and brightness. So these alter the contrast and brightness within the spotlight itself. So you can customize how you want it to appear inside. Then our border settings again. In this case, the border by default is off. I'm going to turn it on for this just so we can demonstrate. Again, I'm going to change the color of that and increase the border thickness. And these are the settings for the spotlight. Okay guys, so now that we've taken a quick look at each of the annotations and what they do, I just want to give you some demonstrations of the capabilities of the annotation filter and what we will be teaching you to do throughout this series. Uh, so for this video, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do a, a spotlight on the vehicle and track the vehicle as it's moving. And then I'm going to use the magnify annotate on the person walking and also track them with the magnification. And we'll see how that works. So when I use the spotlight for our vehicle here, so I'm going to create my spotlight and customize the settings of it. I'm going to give it a border. And then the way I'm going to track this is I'm going to use keyframing. So all I'm going to do 
is uh, just right click this and do toggle keyframe. And don't worry too much about the process of it now. I just want to demonstrate what we can do and I'll teach you how to do it later in the series. I'm going to jump forward and then move my spotlight and create a new keyframe. I'm just going to keep doing this a few times. I'll just go to frame 220. Now I've put them basic keyframes in, I'm going to uh, review what's happened. Now what the keyframes does is it, um, it will interpolate the position and the size of the spotlight between the frames where the keyframes sit. So you could see I kept jumping forward, so I only had to set the spotlight's position in five different keyframes there. And then all the frames in between that range, so from 0 to 220, the position of the spotlight is now going to be interpolated. So I'm just going to deselect the spotlight while I review it. I'm just going to play back what we did. And any time that the spotlight loses the tracking like this, because in this uh, video we've got the vehicle moving and the camera moving, so the, uh, at the speed of the movement of the vehicle alters within the video because of the movement of the camera so the relative uh, speed of it which will affect the keyframing so where i've where we lose this tracking i'm just going to create a new keyframe and i'm just going to keep doing that anytime i see it losing the tracking so just a little bit of one there here So you can see there in just a, a few moments, I've managed to spotlight our vehicle pretty quickly. The next thing I said I'm going to do then is I'm going to magnify our individual. So now I'm going to go to my magnify annotate. Remember, we get this little dot that we can place on our area of interest. And this time I'm going to use a different tracking method. I should mention that all these tracking methods that I'm showing you and all these ways of working with these annotations work for all the annotations. So if I wanted to keyframe an arrow following, following the vehicle, it would work just the same way as when I was doing the spotlight. This tracking method I'm going to show you now is slightly different. It's called software assisted tracking. And here I'm just going to uh, click this track button. Again, I'm going to teach you all about how to set this up correctly in later in the series but I'm just going to demonstrate it for you now and all I need to do here is just hold this tracking button and you'll see in the top right where we've got the magnified selection of our guy that he's been tracked throughout the video now And once I reach the end, I'm just going to deselect the magnify. So again, now I can just play this video and you can see that very quickly we've managed to annotate this 